we're going to try it with two inches of foam insulation and uh, on the floors and walls and at least that in the ceiling will we'll actually have a little more space in the ceiling so we might put a little more insulation up there we'll see how well it holds up to an Alaska winter have you done anything like this before no not really built houses and cabins before but not a connex this is a, <laughs> This is the first Connex remodel, so and we're going to leave uh, a kind of a storage space. We're going to put about 30 foot of it into living space and have a 10 foot shop slash storage space uh, on the uh, west end here. We're hoping to be in it within two months. Two months? Yep. So Livable within two months. We'd have uh, electricity and some kind of water. Probably not full flush toilet and all that in that period of time because we haven't quite got to put in our septic system yet. This is for to support the threshold instead of just foam because you got loads coming over a door wheeling stuff in and it'll give it a lot more support. We could have just put it on, you know, top of the foam. But that's basically the way I'm laying her down like that. So you have the storeroom, mm -hmm. and then... That's my bunk. A little heater that you see there. Okay, this that's is, the heater. Yeah, this is the scale. This is a little bench like would be in a trailer, only underneath it I'm able to put in a 16 by 30 inch drawer, you know, for uh, pantry storage, whatever that I plan on using full-size appliances in the kitchen. You can pretty much see the scale. It's, it's to scale everything on there. What do you plan on using the storeroom for? What's going to be oh, in there? My toolbox, and, which is an item I've packed for years, and I can't do without it. And thing, tools, basically, for it, but I don't have nothing else to store. Fishing okay. gear. Oh, yeah, I got a bunch of fishing gear. And this is about my fourth set. Of, of drawings, and each, each time I find some boo boo or something on it, and I straighten it up. But I think this is final. And the only thing I'm having a little trouble with is finding a refrigerator that's not too. They make them so deep, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stick out from the counter, darn near a foot, a modern refrigerator does. You know? mm -hmm. I want one that's a little closer than that. I think I found one. Wasn't it a Samsung? Yeah, Sam's counter so. with refrigerator, so it's not as deep as the standard ones. This is our scrap pile. Construction company, and he ends up with short pieces and he can't put them to use. You find one? Yeah. All right. That was all right? Okay. Yeah, that'll work great. This is a 21 and a half degree bevel that's cut on, on this board to make it level so your door jam is, is square. I think it's a little more complex than just welding up a, a steel frame to the proper dimensions. It makes a really nice solid uh, frame when it's completed. Put the bevel square on there and then, then you can measure that angle like that. Tighten that up and then you can measure the angle. It's hard to do it here because there's so many angles with bevel squares. Too long to do it on the inside, but I'll do it on the outside. We'll mesh these to the outside. Three. And you have three, right? They fill in the inch and a half gap in the you know, shaping of the side of the connex, and then so it's flush on the outside, and then the part that we cut off, that we scribed off, is filling the gap so there's 
uh, seal. And when you're using a used Connex, see, we ran into a little bit of a problem there. This dent, this window, was right right below kind of a significant dent, and it put all you know. Then of course, it, they weren't as uniform as as they would be in a new a new you know clean Connex wall. After the fact, once you know Jack had his he had the interior laid out the way he wanted it and then he didn't want to change the dimensions on his interior because he has like his kitchen area set up for a 30 inch refrigerator and a stove length of a 30 inch stove I think and then X number of counter space inches of counter space with a with a uh, sink and so he didn't want to move the window so we had to deal with the imperfections it's a lot of work but it you know it's nice and so it's nice and uh, tight and we glued all those little pieces and screwed them to make this level surface so I think even before we get our trim on you wouldn't get any water in there we haven't seen any leaks and it's been raining for days So we're, we're using a, uh, a decking screw that has a, a head on it that's kind flat of head. conical shaped. We put it um, against the flat metal and it'd stick out. So we have a, a countersink drill bit and that'll give us the relief we need. So the head of the screw will be flush to the outside of the metal. Watch it for skid when you put it on. Sixty fourth, actually. Yeah. Plus or minus. That threshold sticks out there about an inch. Probably gonna have to put something on. Jack just likes working with wood. I mean, you could, you you could just put a steel tubular flame in there. He can weld, and we have a welder. But then you have to, you know, drill all your holes to put your frame in. And he thought that less steel on the inside would conduct less cold through. So we thought, you know, the wood's a little better insulator. I mean, you're still going to have to insulate the door jams because we talked about doing steel and that's what you see a lot if you look at any uh you know if you look at some literature on how other folks are framing in windows and doors for connexes it's usually with square square stock cut it and weld it to size for their for their rough opening we're thinking of putting a composting toilet in and that'll make it livable in the short term and maybe in the long term it'll have a full-size bath at the far east end, it'll be eight foot by five foot bath, pretty standard, you know, size bath. It'll have a full length shower, five foot shower on one end, and then a, a vanity and a toilet, which at least for now is going to be a composting toilet, I think. And then it'll come down, and all the kitchen uh, appliances will be on the north wall here. There'll be a refrigerator, a stove, a sink, and a dishwasher, right? On-demand water heater, I think. And it, Yeah, we think we're going to go with the on-demand water heater, which will probably be mounted in the bathroom uh, for the shower and the, and the kitchen sink. And if you had your handy-dandy nailer with you, you could zap it, zap, zap it, an air hammer, and have it all... Not together. They make all this cut to size nowadays. I did not know that. We, they used to send us the material, and we made it, you know. And jams were always hardwood. This is some kind of punky little softwood. You could kick it open anytime you wanted to. Find expensive blocks and things either there or a waste of time. 
because it's like balsa wood, this stuff. And they cover it with a pot. These are all right? That's beautiful. That's the right size. That's an eight. You're going into a chunk of oak now. Now they sell shims you can buy. They're made out of cedar shingles, and you can dent them with your fingernail. They're that soft. They're no totally useless for shims, but people buy them by the bundle all the time and use them. Go ahead and drive her in away. Just a little ways and then put another one in on the other corner till she's tight. I said I could give you the rest of the day off and we could call it hum, but it's yeah. not exactly hum. It's yeah, just no, in place. Yeah. No, it's like uh, it won't be finished today anyway. Uh, I've got to do them hinges and uh, not unless you want to work till midnight. Well, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I'm happy with it. He asked you where you got the doorknob. Oh, I couldn't tell you. 50, 60 years ago. Really? It's an old slave. Uh, I bought, actually, I was buying two key to like, is what I was looking for. And, uh, my partner, Ethel, she liked this one, but I bought stainless steel. So I've been stuck with this one for years. And it, I had a full set of ball bearing hinges, you know, and everything. And I just could never bring myself to give it away or anything like I usually do. It's hard to go in a place and ask for ball bearing hinges like in one of these big box stores, and they look at you like you're crazy. Now, you can find them in the big four-inch commercial hinges, but these little ones for uh, households, you can't, you can't find them. That's why he makes the darn. And you don't have to have ball-bearing hinges. I just happen to like them.